Hi guys, yes, I ask you to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making Bamiya's Makata Stofurno. This is one of my favorite classic Greek comfort foods. It's basically okra with chicken. It's going to be roasted in the oven. The okra is going to be sweet and delicious and not at all slimy. I know some people are afraid of eating okra because of the sliminess, but they are one of my favorite veggies and if you prepare them right, they're going to be so delicious. Let's get started. So we're going to start with the okra and I have lots of okra here. Um, my husband found them at the supermarket and they were fresh and good. So I am going to use this about almost three pounds, two and a half to three pounds. Really all you need is one and a half pounds, but I'm going to use all of them. I have them soaking in a big bowl of cold water and I added about a cup of vinegar to this. It's going to help them um, cook to be nice and delicious and not too slimy as well. So I'm going to take them out and put them in the uh, strainer. Before I put them in here, I did rinse them a few times um, in cold water just to get rid of whatever dirt was on them. And then I soak them in this water. All you need is about 30, 40 minutes and it'll be good. So you want to take a few at a time and just dry them. And um, what you're looking for are, are shorter okra if you want them to be nice and tender. The longer ones tend to be a little bit drier. These still feel nice and soft which means that they're fresh. If you find okra that's overly long and big and feel like cardboard, you do not want to buy those. They're not going to be good. So stick to the softer ones. And I'm going to leave them whole, although you can chop them into little bite-sized pieces. But the more you cut them, uh, the more of their, that gelatinous liquid that they're going to release is going to come out. So I'm going to leave them whole, but it's up to you how you want to make these. I'm just going to cut off the top portion of each one of them. So I'm going to continue cutting off all of the, the stem parts of the okra and then we're going to move on to the next step. So the okra are cleaned and ready and the ends are trimmed off and any bigger ones that were a little bit tougher I just you know threw them away because they're going to be too tough to cook. I have six leg quarters over here. These are leg and thighs with the skin off but the bone is still in. I'm just going to season them with a little bit of salt and just a tiny bit of black pepper on both sides. And then I have a cast iron skillet that's heating over medium high heat. And I'm just gonna brown these a few minutes on each side. So I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to my cast iron skillet. It's really nice and hot, steaming hot actually. And I'm gonna put the chicken in here and just brown it. Hear that sound? That's the sound you wanna hear. About three to four minutes on each side. And then I'm gonna put it in a roasting pan because this is gonna roast together in the oven with the okra. So I'll just do three pieces at a time as to not overcrowd the pan. So now that the chicken is done and it's in the roasting pan, I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to the pan because we're gonna pan fry the okra just lightly, just a tiny bit. Again, leave the heat on medium high and you don't wanna step away from the pan, so it's just gonna take a few minutes. And I'm not putting them all in at once. Once one batch is in, I'm gonna season them with a little bit of salt. And as soon as they get just a tiny bit of color on one side, I'm going to flip them over, let them get a little bit of color on the other side, and then I'm going to transfer them to the baking dish with the chicken. So while the okra is cooking, I'm just going to thinly slice my onions. I have three medium-sized onions here. You could use two, but I really love the way onion and okra go together. And I'm just going to cut them into rounds. This is how my mom always does it, so this is how I'm sticking to it. If you like half moons, you could do that instead. And I'm not separating them. I'm gonna leave the rings intact together. Okay, so the chicken and the okra are in the pan. I did add the onions to the pan also, so that way they can soften up just a little bit. I put a little pinch of salt on top of them, and those are also gonna go in the pan right now. Before I put them all in the pan, I also have a teaspoon of grated garlic. You can just grate um, about two or three garlic cloves, maybe a little bit more. More is always better if you ask me. And since the pan is hot, I'm just gonna warm it through just a little bit with these onions, just so that way it can mellow out the flavor a little. If you don't wanna do this and you like a little bit of a more pungent garlic taste, you can just mix this with the tomato sauce, which is what we're gonna add next. Add all the rest of these onions with the garlic on top of the okra and the chicken. 
already this is smelling so good these are a few steps that you have to take before you put it in the oven but it's so worth it everything is going to be very flavorful and delicious i have a can of tomato sauce this is basically crushed tomatoes these are um, these tomatoes are seasoned with a little bit of salt and a tiny pinch of sugar so it's basically tomato puree with a little bit of sugar and salt if you don't have um, tomato sauce like this, you can just use pureed or crushed tomatoes, or you can even grate a fresh tomato and just season the sauce a little bit with some salt and a little pinch of sugar if you want to mellow out the, um, the acidity of the, of the tomato sauce. I'm going to add a little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes because I do like the heat. I'm going to add some more black pepper. I'm not going to add any liquid to this because the chicken is going to release its liquid. The okra is also going to release a little bit of the liquid. I'm just going to mix everything all together so that way the vegetables are coated in the sauce. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go in and it's going to bake for about 30 or 40 minutes or until the chicken is fully cooked and everything is nice and golden. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. So the chicken and okra meal is ready. It did take a little over an hour in my oven to cook. And for the last 15 minutes, I did raise the temperature to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. So that way there can be some beautiful color and a little bit of caramelization on the onions and on the okra that were on top. I wanted the juices to thicken a little bit that were um, at the bottom of the pan. The chicken and the vegetables did release lots of juices. So it's going to be perf the perfect amount of sauce. This is best served with some nice toasted bread. You can serve it over, if you want to keep the meal completely gluten-free, you can serve it over cauliflower rice or even over zucchini noodles. There are so many ways. You can basically serve it however you want or eat it just as is. The, the okra should be nice and tender. The onion should be nice and sweet. And the chicken should be perfectly cooked. As, as, as long as the internal temperature of the chicken reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit, you can test that with a meat thermometer then it's done the good thing about chicken thighs and drumsticks that is that if you cook them a little bit more they stay juicy and they don't dry out so if you have them use them especially if the bone is in there's going to be so much flavor in them that said it's time to do the taste test best part if you ask me so i'm going to make sure i take a little piece of chicken and okra and a little bit of onion because the onions and the okra go so good together Mm. The okra melts in your mouth, yet because we roasted it, it does have a little bit of texture to it. It just, it just roasted on the outside and became a little bit toasted. The inside melts in your mouth. The chicken is perfectly cooked and flavorful. I also do want to say that I sprinkled some dried oregano on top once it came out of the oven. You can do fresh parsley if you prefer. However you decide to make it, make sure you give this recipe a shot. All of the exact measurements are on the blog, also underneath this video in the description box. www.dimitrosdishes.com is the website where you can get this recipe and so many more. This is my mom's recipe, you guys, and I did make sure to call her and double check that I'm doing everything right before I did the video, even though I have made it several times. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.